kanisa Ningependa tu inue mikono yako mbele za Bwana Just humble yourself before the Lord Mwambie Bwana uko tayari anene na wewe Tunapoongozwa na wimbo huo mfupi nena nasi Watumishi wako baba wanasikiliza Nena nami nena nami Glory to God My God, how excellent is your name.
Nasi baba wetu nena nasi Sisi wa toto wako watu mishu wako tunasikiriza Mio yetu kuna kiu baba wa rehema Nena nasi baba wa rehema Nena nasi mungu wa makeshi Maisha yetu ni mazuri na potu nene ya buwana Nena nasi mtakatifu wa bingu Nena nasi ya subu ya leo Nena nasi mungu wa majeshi Nene ya mio ya watakatifu Nene ya nena katika masikio yetu Mio yetu kafungu kebele zako Karika china la Yesu Kristo Tuwaona ikiwa vema unapotu nene ya buwana Tunaona buwana tukiendelea vizuri Tunaona mambo yetu ikiwa mema buwana unapotu nene ya Tumeshu wako mwibaji ya kasema nena nasi Nena nasi toona vema unapotu nene ya buwana Hata asubi ya leo nena nasi Kusi tunyamazie mungu wa rehema Tunapenda kuchua mawazia na mawazo yako jesu ilivyo Hata katika nyakati ya mazo tunaishi mfamu wa bekone Speak to us oh God we are ready to hear from you We are ready to receive your word We are ready to receive your oracles oh God in the mighty name of Jesus, I give you praise and glory. I give you praise and glory for your word. Thank you for the message to the Lord our Father. We exalt your holy name. We express our gratitude to you, God. Mana kila wakati bwana ujakosa neno la kunene ya watoto wako. Jina la kolipate sima na utukufu. Nani kwa jina la Yesu alie bwana kwa bozu yetu na omba. Tuamini na pia tunakushukuru. Amen. Tunganisha mikono yetu pigia bana makofi. Tunapo chukua viketi vietu. Praise and worship. You can have your seat. Tukalibisha Reverend Florence. Kalibisha Reverend Florence hapa. Maana tuta zaidiana na ye. Na tunapo fanya hivyo. Nikipenda tufungue Biblia zetu. Kalika kitabu cha waraka wa kwanza. Barua ya kwanza ya Petro. The first letter of <clears throat> the first letter of Peter. Let's go to chapter four. We go to chapter four. <clears throat> we are reading verse seven through verse eleven. Kitabu. First letter of Peter, chapter four, verse seven to eleven. Kitabu cha Petero wa kwanza, msari wa, uh, mlangu wa nene, msari wa saba. We go through verse 11. <coughs> Hadi kumi na moja. We lead in the name of Jesus. Tosoma katika jina la Yesu. And the Bible says the end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and of sober mind so that you can pray. Lakini muisho wa mambo yote umekaribia. Basi iweni na akiri Mukeshe katika sala Above all Love one another Deeply Because love covers Over a multitude of sins Zaidi ya yote Iweni na juhudi nyingi Katika kupendana Na kwa sababu ya upendano uh, Kwa sababu Upendano husitiri wingi Wadhambi Over hospitality to one another Without grabbing. Mukaribisha ni nini? Kwa nini pasipo kunugunika? Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as a faithful stewards of God, grace in His various forms. Kila moja kwa kadiri alivyo ipokea karama. Itumieni kwa kuhudumiana Kama mawakili wema Waneema mbali mbali za mungu If anyone speaks They should do so as one Who speaks the very words of God If anyone sings They should do so With the strength God has provided So that in all things God may be praised Through Jesus Christ To him be the glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Mtu akisema na seme kama mausia ya mungu. Mtu akihudumu na hudumu kwa nguvu anazo zijariwa na mungu. Ili mungu atukuzwe katika mambo yote kwa Yesu Kristo. 
utukufu na uweza una yeye hata milele na milele amina the book of romans chapter 13 warumi 13 uh, around me to read verse 11 through 12 nikubarieni sem nisome 11 hadi 12 Romans chapter 13 verse 12 verse 13 through 12 Warumi 13 mstari wa 11 hadi 12 And the Bible says do this understanding the present time the hour is already come for you to awake from your slumber because our salvation is nearer now than than we first believed Naam Tukijua wakati kwamba saa ya kuamka katika usingizi imekwisha kuadia. Kwa maana sasa wokovu wetu karibu na sikuriko tulipoanza kuamini. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Usiku umeendelea sana. Mchana umekaribia. Basi na tuyavue matendo ya giza na kusivaa siraha za nuru. Na kusivaa siraha za nuru. Amen. Amina. Our time is much spent. Wakati wetu umesonga sana. And because of the things all the things we have done which are actually necessary Na ni kwa sababu ya mambo ambayo tumeyafanya ambao ya yanafaa Because they are part of us as we progress in this life Maana ni mambo ambayo ni yetu tunapoendelea katika maisha haya This afternoon I want to share a message I've given the title Ah arasili yaro napenda kugawana nanyu ujumbe ambao nimeupa mada Understanding the times kufahamu wakati and the reason why we need to understand the times na sababu ya kuelewa na wakati so that we may know what we are supposed to do at this particular time ili kwamba tuelewe kile ambacho twafaa kukifanya katika wakati huu so the complete message is understanding the times to know what what ought to be done Uh, kwa hivyo ujumbe kamili ni kwamba kuelewa na wakati ili tujue ya kwa, tuelewe ni kipi ambacho tunastahili kukifanya na katika wakati mgani. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jina la Bwana libarikiwe. When this message started uh, twinkling right in my heart. Ujumbe huu ulipokuwa u- unagonga katika moyo wangu. I decided to give uh, myself time to do a bit of study about time and season. Nikamwa ya kwamba nichipatie wakati ili niweze kuelewa kuhusu nyakati. And also to understand more why God is asking or calling us to engage ourselves in understanding times. Na pia kuelewa ni kwa nini Mungu anataka tuelewe kuhusu nyakati. And I came to understand na nikaja kuelewa that time and understanding time is very necessary. Nikaja kuelewa ya kwamba ku, uh, kufahamu wakati ni wa muhimu sana. Because the Bible says that there is time for everything under the sun. Maana Biblia yasema ya kwamba kuna wakati wa kila jambo katika ulimwengu. There is a time to be born. Kuna wakati wa kuzaliwa. There is time to die. Kuna wakati wa kufa. There is time to be happy. Kuna wakati wa kufurahi. There is time to weep. Na kuna wakati wa kulia. There is time to hold. Kuna wakati wa, ku, wa, wa to hold. Kuna wakati wa kushika. There is time to release. Kuna wakati wa kuachilia. There is time to gather. The, oh, kuna wakati wa kukusanya. There is time to scatter. Kuna wakati wa kutawanya. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jina la Bwana libarikiwe. There is time to love and there is time also to hate. Kuna wakati wa kupenda na kuna wakati wa kuchukia. And when God was creating time, na wakati Mungu alikuwa anatengeneza wakati, He did so understanding. Alifanya hivyo kwa ufahamu that there are things men under the sun will need to do. Uh, ya kwamba kuna watu uh, ambao wamo katika duniani wanasaidi kufanya. There are things under the sun men will have to do. Kuna mambo hapa duniani wanadamu watafanya. And they require time so so much. Na inahitajika muda sana to fulfill what every time requires them to do. 
what every time requires them to do. Everything that blessed be the name of the Lord. And as I was meditating upon this message, my mind went into finding somewhere in the Bible where the Bible says that they were wise and they understood times. And as I was searching in the Bible where this word is written, I came to the book of First, First Chronicles chapter 12. Nikaja katika mambo ya nyakati sura ya 12. The first Chronicles first Chronicles chapter 12 verse 32. First Chronicles chapter 12 verse 32. Uh, kitabu cha mambo ya nyakati. Mambo ya nyakati wa kwanza 12 12 verse 32. 12 mstari wa 33. And the Bible reads like this. Na Biblia inasoma namna hii. From Isaka who we are who we are men or Isaka men of understanding the times and knew what Israel ought to do. Na wana wa Isakari watu wenye akili za kujua nyakati kuyajua ya wapasayo Israeli and the Bible gives their number they were 200 chiefs uh, together with their relatives and blessed be the name of the Lord now we find this tribe one of the sons of, uh, of Jacob by the name Issachar Tunapata hii kabila wa wana wa moja wa Yakobo Isakari. Number one, the Bible says these people were intelligent. Uh, Jabura kwanza, Bibli inasema ya kwamba hawa watu walikuwa wenye uh, uh, akiri. Number two, together with the tribe of uh, uh, Zebron. Uh, number ya pili, wakiwa pa moja na Zeburoni. They were people who held the pen. There were people who held the pen. Ni watu ambao walio shika karamu. And they would use their pen and their papers or books to write people. Na wange chukua kara, wange tumia karamu na karatasi kuandika majina ya watu. The people who would go up to the mountain of the Lord. Watu ambao wangeenenda hata mlimani mwa Bwana. To offer sacrifices of righteousness. Kutoa dhabihu za haki. These are people who understood what is supposed to be done at what time. Hawani watu waliojua ni nani ni nini iwapasao kufanya katika wakati upi. You couldn't find Isakal just there and there is a time doing nothing. Ungempata Isakari akiwa mahali pale na kuna wakati akifanya akiwa bure. You wouldn't find Isakal the tribe of Isakal being there without doing something at a particular time. You wouldn't find them. Being there, they have time and they're doing nothing. You couldn't find them. Being there, and they have got time, but they were doing nothing. Are we together? Uh, tuko pamoja. What do we mean? Na maanisha namna gani? Every time you would find the sons of Issachar. Wakati wowote ungewapata wana wa Isakari. If they are not in the sea. Kama hawako mahali pale. The sea. Baharini. Oh, baharini. Together with the sons of Hebron. Uh, Wakiwa pamoja na wana wa Seburoni. Doing business in the sea. Wakifanya biashara baharini. You would find them somewhere writing down the names of people. Uge wapata mahali wakinakiri majina ya watu. Because there was a time to do business. Maana kulikuwa na wakati wakufanya biashara. There was a time to gather people, not only to gather them, to gather them together with their names. 
Aa, na pia kulikuwa na wakati wa kuwakusanya watu na sio kuwakusanya tu ni pamoja na majina yao and when they gathered enough na wakati walikusanya ya kutosha they do not gather people and wrote down their names only hawakusajili majina ya watu tu they also called upon them to come with their substances so that they could go to the mountains and offer sacrifices of righteousness. They knew the time for business. They knew the time for gathering together. And they knew the time to go to the mountain to offer sacrifices. And as we have read, these people were so so important in their entire tribes of Israel. Because again God had given them the intelligence as I've said. God had also given them the power to rule. Pia Mungu alikuwa amewapatia nguvu ya kutawala. The Bible says 200 chiefs with their relatives under their command. Biblia inasema ya kwamba watu 200 chini ya mamlaka yao. So every other Israelites. Kila Muisraeli yote mwingine. We are actually under these wise people. Uh, walikuwa chini ya watu hawa. We, we, we are under these intelligent men. Walipokuwa chini ya hao watu wenye akili. And God allowed them to submit to them. Na Mungu akawaruhusu wanyenyekee chini yao. So that they could give spiritual and prophetic directions. Ili wangepata mwelekeo um, Glory and honor be to God. So as a people it is important for us to understand the times and the seasons we are living in. So that when we understand we shall not just do anything for that matter. We shall not just do anything for that matter. But whatever we engage ourselves to do, we will be in line with a specific purpose for that particular time. So why did God give the Isaacs the wisdom? And the wisdom was not just wisdom but wisdom to understand times and seasons. God expected them. Mungu aliwatarajia. Even to read the other Israelites to do what was supposed to be done at that particular time. Hata kuelekewa za Waisraeli wengine kufanya lililostahili kufanywa katika wakati ule. They knew when to go to battle. Walijua ni wakati mgani wa kwenda vita. They knew when to gather resources and where are they for Israelites. Walijua ni wakati mgani wa kukusanya mali kwa wa, uh, kwa Waisraeli. And they were highly depended upon. Na walitegemewa sana. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My prayer for us is this. Uh, ombi, uh, ni hili. Is may God raise some people here. Ni ya kwa Mungu ainue watu mahali hapa. And give them wisdom and understanding. Na wape uh, hekima na kufahamu. That instead of engaging the child to do just anything. Uh, ya kwamba uh, 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 badala ya ku we shall engage the church, the church to do things when we are fully informed what God wants to be done at that, that, that particular time. Look at the entire Israel. You wouldn't find some of them doing other things when others are doing other things. And that is why God gave this, this tribe the ability to direct the people what Israelites ought to do at a particular time. I didn't know just to stop here. I did not just stop here. I went to the book of Ecclesiastes. Chapter 3 verse 17. Where the Bible says. There is there a time. And a season. 
for every purpose kwa kila kusudi and every work na kila kazi please you could read for us in kiswahili there is time there there is there time for every purpose and for every work mohubiri mohubiri 3:17 ukipata tu unaweza kutusomea mtu mwingine yote hii biblia ni kubwa <laughs> amen maridu have you got an it I want to hear it even kikuyu there is no problem we want to understand what god is saying mbili tatu mstari wa saba. wakati mstari wa saba. no 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 ecclesiastes 3 verse 17 nikas 3:17 alo Nikasema moyoni mwangu mm-hmm. Mungu atawahukumu wenye haki na wasio haki mm-hmm. kwa kuwa kuna wakati huko kwa kila kusudi na kwa kila kazi. Amen. Kikuyu what does it say? The Kikuyu Bible. Our say is to understand not just to read the Bible. We want to read and understand. Ah uh, Koherezu 3 mstari wa 17 Roiga atirire ukiuga na ngoro atire Kai niwe ugashiridia ando aria athiku ona aria aganu ni ukoro maudu mothe ona mawira mothe mari na mahinda mamo Mhm Eh na how how horo wa shiana si Adamu Ah ah The Bible says God you judge the righteous and the wicked Mungu anasema ya kwamba atawahukumu wenye haki na wasio haki. Because as they are expected to do a particular thing in a particular time or a particular time. Maana wanapokusudiwa wafanye jambo katika wakati uliowekwa. Lack of understanding what we are supposed to do at this particular moment is seen. Uh, kuto, uh, kukosa kuelewa wakati wa kufanya hilo jambo kunaonekana. It is seen. Ni dhambi. Why will God judge the righteous and the wicked? Kwa nini Mungu hahukumu wenye haki na wasio haki? In terms of what? Time and purpose and work. Kuhusu wakati na um, na rengo na wakati. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jina la Bwana libarikiwe. If you don't seek to understand, kama hutatafuta kuelewa what the Lord is saying to be done at this particular time. Kile Mungu anataka kifanywe katika wakati huu. And you do your own things. Na ufanye mambo yako. You don't get a credit. Haufanyi haupati uh, uh, thawabu. But it is counted and us has seen and that is why God is ready to judge us if we fail to understand what is supposed to be done at a particular time. Na in, tunahesabiwa kuwa ni dhambi. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Then what is my responsibilities? Basi mimi ninatakiwa nifanye nini? I have to engage myself. Ni lazima niji ni nijipange. Amen. Amen. In the word of God even reading the times what is being spoken in the TV, what is being written in the newspapers. Ah kuhusu nini nikimeandikika katika neno la Mungu, magazeti What is happening in the skies? Ni nini kinafanyika kwenye anga? What am I hearing most of the time? Ni nini nasikia wakati mwingi? What is that which is so frequently mentioned in uh, on the pulpit? Ni nini hiyo inatajwa mara nyingi kwenye madhabahu? When every word is preached. Wakati uh, kila neno linahubiriwa. What is God is saying? Ni nini Mungu anasema? What is the spirit of God directing me to do? Roho Mtakatifu ananielekeza kufanya nini? And because not every time the word of God is brought like this to understand times and seasons. Na kwa sababu sio kila wakati tunaletewa neno kama hili kuelewa nyakati na majira. Prayers will help you to understand Ma- what God is saying to be done at this particular time. Maombezi yatakusaidia ni nini ambacho kinahitajika kufanyika katika wakati huu? 
Let me tell you. There are two categories of sin. Kuna dhambi mara mbili. Two groups of sin. Ah ah viwango viwili vya dhambi. Number one is the sin of commission. Ah Dhambi ya kwanza ni dhambi ya kutofanya. The sin of commission. Commission is to do. Oh ni dhambi ya kutenda. Amen. Amen. Everything that we do against the will of God and the word of God It is a sin of commission. Something that you have done knowing this is wrong. By and Most of the sins there are under the sun they fall under the category of sins of commission the other category of sin is the sin of omission the sin of omission and now how does this one come na hii inakuja namna gani? The Bible says. Biblia inasema, anyone who knows how to do good. Yeyote ajuae kutenda mema. And he or she does not do it. Na yeye hafanyi. He sins. Yeye anatenda dhambi. The sin of omission comes. Ah dhambi ya kutofanya inaingia. When you know I'm supposed to do this. Unapojua ninastahili kufanya hili. And whether you know it or intentionally you fail to do na uh, uh, iwa, iwapo unajua ama unakusudia kutofanya you fail to do it unakosa kufanya it is called the sins of omission inaitwa dhambi ya kutofanya blessed be the name of the lord jina la bwana libarikiwe now what is the bible says in the book of ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 17 sasa biblia inasema aje kuhusu hiyo dhambi katika kitabu cha mhubiri 3:17 what is the bible say God you judge men. Mungu atahukumu watu. Both the right, the righteous and the wicked. Ah, wenye haki na wasio haki. And why will he judge them? Na kwa nini awahukumu? Because there is there a time. Kwa sababu kuna wakati. For every purpose. Akira kusudi. And every work under the sun. Ah, na kila kazi hapa duniani. What should I be busy doing? Ningekuwa nikiwa harakatini kufanya nini? I should be busy trying to understand. Ningekuwa kwa harakati kuelewa not what men want to be done. Sio vile watu wanataka ifanywe. But what God want me to do. Lakini ni vile Mungu anataka mimi nifanye. And this is why God used the sons of uh, Issachar so so much over the leadership of the Israelites. Na diposa Mungu alitumia wana wa Isakari sana sana katika uongozi wa Israeli. The Levites were used in the spiritual matters. Warawi walitumika katika mambo ya kiroho. But the Issachar were used in the leadership. Lakini wana wa Isakari walitumika katika uongozi. Helping the Israelites to understand and to know what to be done at a particular time. Kusaidia wa Israeli kujua ni nini walifanye na walifanye. Zia for church listen to me. Zia for church listen to me. Hivyo kanisa nisikizeni. It is not just about sitting and doing just anything you find around. Uh, sio tu kuketi na kufanya lolote ambalo nalipata kufanya. It is good to try as much as you can. Ni vizuri kujaribu sana vile uwezavyo. To understand what are we supposed to do? Kuelewa ni nini ambacho tunasahidi kukifanya. I received a call from the committee that is running the, week, the, 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 the wedding for Sunday. Nikapokea simu kutoka kwa kamati ambao wanapanga harusi ya Jumapili. And they told me Reverend we are short of this and this. Na wakaniambia uh, mchungaji kiongozi tuko na uhaba wa hii na hii. And I asked the, the one who called me. Na nikamuliza aliyenipigia. What solution do you have? Nyinyi muna suruhisho gani? They said we are decided to call you. Wakasema tumeamua kukupigia. Somehow, kwa jia moja, he expected me to move. Wali gojea ni ondo ama ni tende jambo. Amen. Amen. And this morning I called Wahome. 
Na asubu ya leo nikamuita Wahome. I told him we want to meet in the office. Nikamwambia nataka tukutane ofisini. Because there is something to be done before Sunday. Kwa sababu kuna jambo linastahili kufanywa kabla ya Jumapili. The reason why they called me. Sababu ya kunita is so that I can engage myself. Ni ni poza nijihusishe. Among the things we are supposed to do today. Ah uh, na mambo uh, nijihusishe katikati ya mambo ambayo tutafanya siku ya leo. I try to get a time to fix this one so that things can go on. Nipate nafasi ya kuingisha hayo mambo ili tuendelee. And that is why he came here and asked us to do what we have done. Na liposa akatwita siku ya leo akaja siku ya leo kutuuliza tufanye jinsi ambavyo tumefanya. Because there is a purpose and there is work. Kwa kuna ma Ma, marengo ya kila wakati there is purpose and there is work to be done kuna marengo na kazi ya kufanywa and i thank god that, wa, that work has been done nashukuru mungu kwamba hiyo kazi imefanyika my prayer is may god give you what you are promised ah uh, ombi langu ni kwamba upeane kile ambacho umeahidi come sunday come sunday ijapo jumapili as the lord will be looking at us kama vile mungu akitutazama he may reward us atutunuku because we took advantage of the time he has given us in this in this service kwa sababu tulichukua wakati ambao alikuwa ametupatia katika ibada hii we are men who understood time ni watu waliolewa nyakati and the most important thing na uh, jambo la muhimu sana is that they helped the Israelite to know what ought to be done ni kwamba walisaidia waisraeli kujua ni nini wanastahili kufanya imagine this ability was not given to the people eh je na uh, kama uh, huu uweza haukupewa hawa watu we could do we could see people who would do things have hazardry tugeona watu ambao wange pa, wangefanya mambo kwa jia isiyofaa Look at the towers of Babel, the builders of the towers of, of, of Babel. Angalia vizingiti vya vya uh, Babel. Babel. When they came together. Walipokuja pamoja. They said. Wakasema. In this season. In this season. Katika majira haya. We are going to build ourselves a tower. Tutajijengea mnara. And they came with a reason. Na wakaja na sababu. Why it was a season to build the tower? Na na wakaja na sababu ni why why it was a season to build the tower ni kwa nini wajenge uh, mnara katika majira hayo because they knew a time and a season was coming maana walijua wakati na majira inaja when god would scatter them through all out or through out the world uh, wakati mungu angewatawanya katika ulimwengu wote and now to escape that time na sasa kuepuka wakati ule somebody came up with a good mind mtu akaja na mawazo mazuri let us use this is on a time wacha tutukue majira haya na nyakati to do something for ourselves tufanye jambo kwa ajili yetu and because it was not for god na kwa sababu haikuwa ya mungu god came down and M- confounded their language or their tongues mungu akaja na akakoroga dini zao amen amina And what is the spirit of God saying to us today? Na roho wa Mungu anasema kwetu nini leo? We have read in the book of Peter. Tumesoma kwenye kitabu cha Petero. We have also read in the book of uh, Romans chapter 13. Tumesoma Warumi 13. And every child of God. Na kila mtoto wa Mungu should embrace what the spirit is telling the church. Anastahili kukubatia kile roho anaambia kanisa. So that we don't sit or we don't live here. Uh, ili tusiketi ama tusiishi hapa as if time is not passing kana kwamba wakati hausongi time is running out so so much wakati unasonga haraka sana christ is a ju- just about to come back yesu yukaribu kurudi the spirit of god is warning the church roho wa bwana ana is warning the church kanisa. not to live a sin we are already settled and we are going nowhere ili tusiishi kama na kwamba tu atuendi mahali popote we have arrived ni kana kwamba tulifika we have not arrived hatujafika so the spirit of god speaking in peter a uh, roho wa bwana akinena katika uh, petoro in his in this ex, uh, in this ex, expo, uh, in this uh, episode akinena katika uh, barua ya ya Yakobo. He says end of all things is near. 
Anasema wakati wa kila jambo umewadia. Therefore what is his counsel to us? Kwa hivyo uh, ma, uh, mawaidha mawaidha yake kwetu ni yapi? Is that therefore be alert and sober minded so that you can pray. Ni ya kwamba tuwe wenye akiri ili tuweze kuomba. Therefore be alert. Kwa hivyo tukeshe. Be sober. Tukuwe na akiri. Be watchful. Be watchful. Tukuwe waombezi. Mwakukesha. Na kukesha. Be watchful. Tukeshe. So that you can pray. Ili uweze kuomba. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jina la Bwana libarikiwe. I, I was sharing the word of God with a with a, with a, a certain one of our fellowships the just the other day Nilikuwa na shiriki neno na ushirika mmoja wa hili kanisa siku nyingine As I was teaching them how God is speak and how to hear God Nilipokuwa ninawahubiria jinsi ya kusikia Mungu na vile Mungu hunena One thing that is required of us to hear God Jambo moja ambalo linalitahidika kwetu kusikia Mungu We must give ourselves an environment and a time that our minds are at rest Lazima tupeane um, we must give our, our mind Lazima tupeane mawazo yetu time and an environment uh, wakati na, ma, na majira na mazingira ambayo uh -huh. so that we mungu, can we our mind can be at peace ili mawazo yetu yawe katika amani Mungu haneni na watu wakati kumejaa kelele mm. uh, God does not speak to people when there is a full of noise Lord is speak to us when we are quiet in our minds and our minds are at rest. Mungu hunena wakati ma, uh, tumenyamaza na mawazo yetu yamo katika kunyamaza. There is something where that is written I think it is the book of Job chapter 33. Kuna mahari Biblia imeandikika katika Yohana Yohana Job 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 I uh chapter 33. There are there in that that God does speak not once not even twice and there is a purpose why God speaks so that he can have man listen to him that he can save him from the pit sometimes God may put somebody into the bed of sickness wakati mwingine Mungu anakutia katika kitanda cha ugojwa So that when he is speaking he is not really busy with other things which are which are not to be which are which is not supposed to be busy with them. Ili asiwe ako katika harakati ya mambo ambayo hastahili kuwa nayo. So that at that moment of need. Ili katika ule wakati wa hitaji. When his body is full of pain. Kati mwili wake umejaa uchungu. At that time when he asking he is asking God to heal him. At that particular time he is ready also to hear what God is saying. But does God have to put every one of us into a bed of sickness? So that he can speak to us and we understand what he is saying? No, he doesn't. He expects us to be responsible men and women and also people men and women who understand the times and not only to understand the time but also to know what at that particular time we are supposed to do listen to me the end of all things is at hand When time is drawing near. As the Bible has said, the day, the night is so spent. The day is almost here. What night is being spent? What does the Bible says about the night? What is that night which is almost spent? Huo usiku ambao umesonga sana na Biblia inasema nini kuhusu usiku? It is all the time that is spent under the sun. Ni wakati wote ambao umetumika katika duniani. Whether it is during the day or the night. Iwepo ni usiku ama mchana. That all that time as we keep on waiting for the day of the revelation of Jesus Christ. Wakati huo wote ambao tunaishi tukigojea kufunuliwa kwa Bwana Yesu. The Bible says that we do not know what or how we shall appear. 
Biblia inasema ya kwamba hatujui jinsi atakavyokuja. How we shall look when he appears. Hata vile atakavyokuwa atakapofika. But one thing we know. Lakini jambo moja tunajua. Is that when he appears we shall be like him. Ya kwamba atakapofunuliwa tutafarara na yeye. That is the time, that time when we the Lord will appear. He, uh, uh, huo wakati huo wakati ambao Yesu atakuja ata, ata and look, uh, like him. na atafanane na yeye this is what apostle peter is talking about hiyo ndio uh, 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 mtume petero ananena kuhusu that the day is almost here ya kwamba wakati umewadia the night is much spent usiku umesonga sana knowing that the night is much spent Tukijua ya kwamba usiku umesonga sana and the day is almost here. Na wakati uh, uh, mchana umewadia. He encourages to do these three things. Ana tu atia uh, moto changamoto tufanye haya mambo. Number one. Jambo la kwanza. To be sober. Tuwe wenye akili. Amen. Amen. Kutokuwa walefi wa mambo. Ah uh, kutokuwa warefi wa mambo therefore be alert and be sober kwa hivyo tuwe uh, wenye makinifu watu makinifu wamemakinika tumakinike be alert tumakinike and be sober na tukue na akili ii na wa minds ndani ya mawazo yetu so that we can do what ili tufanye nini so that we can pray ili tuweze kuomba and now let me summarize this a bit for you na wacha sasa ni ufanye muhusasa likwenu in these last days katika siku hizi za mwisho one of the things the church ought to be doing and doing it with a lot of seal jambo ambalo kanisa linastahili kuwa likifanya na kufanya kwa kujitoa sana is to watch and pray ni kukesha na kuomba. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jina la Bwana libarikiwe. And this we are the words of Jesus. Na haya ndio maneno ya Yesu. When he went to the mountain of uh, I mean uh, to the garden of Gethsemane. Walipokuwa alipoenda katika shamba la Gethsemane. With, with 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 Peter, John and James. Akiwa na Yohana, uh, Petero na Yakobo. When he told them to pray wakati alituambia tuombe and wa, watch together with him for just one hour wakati aliwaambia waombe na akaenda na wao kwa lisali moja after one hour he came to them baada ya lisali moja akarudi and the bible says that he found them asleep biblia inasema ya kwamba akawakuta wamelala this was the, the, the peter is encouraging the church to do ha hili neno ambalo petelo ana wa, wa, wa wasihi kanisa kufanya it is the same same words ni hayo maneno maneno tu jesus used to speak to his disciples yesu aliwanenea wanafunzi wake so that they could stand with him uh, ili wangesimama na yeye the bible says biblia inasema be alert and sober tukeshe na tukue uh, na akili be watchful so that you can pray kesha ili uweze kuomba Jesus spoke the same word Yesu akanena maneno hayo be watchful and pray mkeshe na muombe because the hour is come maana wakati umewadia what hour was Jesus speaking about anilisali gani Yesu alinena Jesus was speaking about the hour of his crucifixion Yesu alinena wakati wake wa kusurubishwa and you can imagine the sorrow that uh, that landed in, uh, under the landed on the on the earth na unaweza kuona uh, husuni iliyokuwa na Yesu because they thought that was the end of the, their savior and their king maana walifikiria ndio mwisho wa mwokozi wao na mfalme wao but let me also tell the church lakini pia ni waambie kanisa the end of all these things we do mm -hmm. uh, mwisho wa mambo haya yote tunayoyafanya gathering whatever we are gathering uh, gathering whatever we are gathering pamoja na yale ambayo tunakusanya visiting places we would like to visit kutembea mahali uh, kokote ambapo tutopenda kutembea bring every kind of pressure and happiness in the under the world kufanya kila laha ambayo tunataka kufanya hapa duniani walking in whatever way we want to walk around kutembea kwa jia ambazo zote zote ambazo tutopenda kutembea the bible says the end of all these things is at hand Bilinda sema ya kwamba hayo mambo yote yanakuja kukoma. And so that we will not be caught unaware. Ili tusipatwe pasipo kujua. We ought to be doing what at this time church. Tunasahili kufanya nini kanisa? We ought to be watchful and 
pray. I want to remind you as the Bible also has said. Nataka kuwakumbusha kama jinsi Biblia inasema that our time our day of the end of our faith is also near. Ya kwamba mwisho the end of our expectation of faith is near. Expectation of the end of the expectation of our faith is near. Failure. Oh, failure. All right. Faith. Fail of failure. Mwisho uh-huh. wa matarajio mm-hmm. ya imani yetu umekaribia sana. Asante. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jina la Bwana libarikiwe. And now, what is the end of our faith? Na sasa mwisho wa matarajio yetu ni gani? What is the end of our faith? Mwisho wa imani yetu. Mwisho wa imani yetu ni nini? It is our salvation. Ni wokovu wetu. Today, leo, we are just hopeful. Tunatumainia tu. We have hope in eternal life. Tunatumainia uzima wa milele. And we thrive every day every night. Na tunapigana kila usiku na kila mchana. So that we do not miss the mark. Ili tusiweze kukosa uh, rengo. Amen. Amen. And when will be the end of our faith? Na wakati tutafika mwisho wa imani yetu. It is when the night will be fully spent. Ni wakati usiku utakuwa umesonga wote. And the day shall be here. Na mchana utawadia. What is expected on that day? Tunatarajiwa nini siku hiyo? The trumpet shall blow. Tarubeta italia. The the saints will be will be will be, will be raptured. Watakatifu watanyakuriwa. The dead shall rise fast. Walio wafu watafufuka kwanza. And the day shall be here. Na wakati na siku itakuwa nasi. The day shall be here with us. Na, na siku itakuwa nasi. Now this is a call for preparation. Huu ni mwito wa kujitayarisha. How do we How do we prepare ourselves to meet Jesus? Je, tunajitayarishaje kuwa na Yesu? And how do we engage ourselves that we shall not miss the season? Na sasa tunajipanga aje tusikose yale majira. The Bible encourages the church today of this time and this season to watch and pray. Biblia inatu inatushawishi tukeshe na kuomba. I was getting four things uh, which we are supposed to do in the book of Peter chapter chapter the first Peter chapter chapter 4 verse 11 verse 7 to 11. Na nikaona kuna mambo ambayo tunastahili kufanya katika kitabu hicho Petro wa kwanza sura 4 because, because I was asking myself knowing that the end of all things is near and our salvation drew it nearer than fast than when we first believed number 1 even this is in the book of Romans chapter 13 where we read Ah uh, jambo la kwanza ni pale tulisoma warumi is that we love one another deeply. Ni, ni ya kwamba tupendane kwa kina. Peter encourages the church. Petelo anatia moto uh, love one another deeply. Mpendane kwa kina. Why should we love one another deeply? Kwa nini tupendane? This are not the time to hate one another brethren. This is not nyakati za kuchukia mmoja na mwingine. This is not the time to undermine one another. Isio wakati wa kuchimbana. This is not the time to look down upon an, uh, one another. Isio wakati wa kushushana. Just understand the time is so near for our salvation than when we first believe. Aere watu ya kwamba wakati wa wokovu wetu umekaribia kuliko wakati tulipoamini. Yes you plan your day. Unapopanga siku yako. As you plan your night. Unapopanga usiku wako. Just understand there are some things which are supposed to be uh, top there in the, in the in the hierarchy of your 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 priorities. Ah, uh, jua ya kwamba kuna mambo ambayo yanasahili kuwa pale juu. Juu kabisa. Uh, uh, your hierarchy of priorities. Kulingana na yale ya mambo ambayo unaweka mwanzo. Number one. Jambo la kwanza. Loving one another. Kupenda dana na mwingine. The Bible says in the book of Romans Biblia chapter 13. Sema, cha warumi, Let no debt remain. Kusiwe na deni takayobaki. But the debt of love. Lakini deni ya upendo. Kusiwe na deni ambao utabaki nayo. Mm, kusiwe na deni utakayosalia nayo. Lakini deni ya upendo idumu. 
Lakini deni, uh, the Blessed be the name of the Lord. This is what Paul was also admonishing the child to do. To love one another also. And we love one another also knowing that love covers a multitude of sin. Na tunapendana tukijua ya kwamba uh, upendo unasitiri una wingi wa dhambi. Remember the lawyer who went to Jesus? Kumbuka uh, hakimu aliyeenda kwa Yesu. And asked to Jesus. Na kamulisa Yesu. What is the 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 the, the, the greatest test, uh, commandment out of the 10 commandments? Ni amri gani kubwa kati ya hizi 10? And he thought he could cut Jesus at his ignorance. Na akafikiria ya kwamba atamshika ata Yesu katika pengine kupuuza. But Jesus was wise. Lakini Yesu alikuwa mwenye hekima. Even now Jesus is wise. Hata sasa Yesu ni mwenye hekima. And he sum, summarized the ten commandments in this way. He okay. summarized the ten commandments this way. To summarize. Aka, Aka marizia amri kumi na mna hii. Aka kwa ufupi. Akaziweka kwa ufupi hivi. Amri kumi. Amri kumi akaziweka kwa ufupi. And he said. Akasema. The first great commandment is this. Amri ambayo ya kwaza ambayo ni kubwa ni hii. Love God with all your might, with all your strength and with all your mind. Mpende mungu wako kwa mawazo yako na nguvu zako zote. And number two is just like the first one. Na ya pili ni kama ile tu ya kwanza. Love your neighbors as you love yourself. Wapende majirani wako kama unavyo jipenda. If you are going to happen to go to heaven. Kama utaweza kwenda binguni. Having done or obeyed the ten commandments. Ukiwa umefanya na kuti amri kumi and you hate your neighbor na unachukia jirani wako you will not enter hautaingia i remind you of the young man nikukumbusha kwa yule uh, kijana mdogo and the bible says that he was rich biblia inasema ya kwamba alikuwa tajiri and he went to jesus na akamwendea yesu he said master Kamu, akamwambia bwana what must i do nifanye nini to receive the kingdom of God. Jesus said unto him. You know the ten commandments. Go and do them. And he turned to Jesus and said. Lord. This one I have done. Since I was young. And Jesus looked at him. And the Bible says Jesus admired that young boy. Na Yesu akapendezwa na yule kijana mdogo. And because he asked what what do I remain with and done? Do, what do I remain with and done? Ni nini ninachosalia nacho mkononi? And Jesus told him. Na Yesu akamwambia, Go and sell all your substances. Endena uuze vitu vyako vyote. Give to the poor. Wapatie maskini. And come and follow me. Na uje unifuate. The Bible says he left Jesus he left Jesus with a very sad face because he was not ready to share his love he was not ready to share his substance with those who do not have and these are the times church understand the times we are in so that we can also know what we are supposed to be busy doing Peter said number one and also this is what Paul is encouraging to us to do love one another. Number two, what the church is supposed to be doing at this particular time is to show hospitality. Mm, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hospitality. The situation in our country is there. The situation in our country is there. 
hali ya, ya nchi yetu sio nzuri sana it is so bad Iko, ni, ni mbaya sana the cost of living is very high hali ya maisha imeenda juu but at the same time lakini katika wakati ule there pia there are people who have enough kuna watu walio na ya kutosha even to throw away hata ya kutupa but don't forget lakini usisahau there are people who are sleeping hungry kuna watu wanaolala njaa even getting one meal a day is difficult hata kupata mamkuli mamoja ni ngumu and look at us na tutazame sisi even to share that one plate with somebody else is so hard hata kushiriki sahani hiyo moja na mtu ni ngumu sana chat at this time kanisa katika wakati huu when we are supposed to be busy Tunasahiri kuwa katika Loving one another. Tukipendana moja na mwingine. We are failing the test. Tunaanguka mtihani. Raise up your hand and say God help me. Nwa mkono wako mwambie Mungu nisaidie. The moment we cannot share a cup of porridge with a neighbor. Wakati ambapo uwezi kushiriki kikombe cha uji na jirani yako we are failing the test tunaanguka mtihani and one of the principles god wants us to apply in our lives in order to receive na jambo ambalo kanuni moja kanuni moja ambalo mungu anapenda tutumie in order to receive ili tuokoke is to give out ni kupeana now sasa i have got two things nina mambo mawili in this last time last days katika nyakati hizi za mwisho the church is supposed to be doing what kanisa linasahidi kuwa likifanya nini number one, love one another jambo la kwanza kupendana number two, show hospitality jambo la pili ni kuwa karibu if you can go to the hospital kama ungeenda hospitali and carry just some few fruits na ubebe matunda tu kidogo not because there is somebody you want to see there sio kwamba kuna mtu nataka kuona mahali pale go and share the love of christ enda ushiriki upendo wa kristo go and show hospitality enda uonyeshane ukarimu you will be fulfilling one of the greatest commandments under the sun utakuwa ukitimiza uh, amri hiyo moja katika chini ya jua. remember remember one thing that jesus was accusing his people of for Jambo moja ambalo Yesu alikuwa akishutumia wanafunzi wake. I was hungry you did not feed me. Nilikuwa na njaa haukunilisha. I was naked you did not clothe me. Nilikuwa uchi haukunivisha. I was in hospital you never visited Nilikuwa me. Nilikuwa hospitalini na haukunija kunitazama. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jina la Bwana libarikiwe. I remember how when my mom was in hospital. Inakumbuka wakati mama yangu alikuwa hospitalini. Two weeks Wiki mbili I could see how people would come. Ningeona vile watu walikuwa wanakuja. Some people di, some people didn't have their their patient there but they just came to pray. Watu wengine hawakuwa na wagonjwa wao mahali pale lakini walikuja tu kuomba. I remember the lady who shared the bed with my mom. Nakumbuka yule mama alikuwa anashiriki kitanda pamoja na mama. When they would get food first kama wangepata chakula kwanza they would share equally walikuwa wanashiriki pamoja this is the church the lord jesus christ is looking for hili ndilo kanisa ambalo kristo yesu anatafuta suppose we arrived there before her, her people na kama tungefika mahali pale mbele ya watu wake my mother's food would be shared together with that other woman mama angeshiriki chakula na huyo mama mwingine church this drawing hospitality kanisa na tujue ukarimu when you are going to visit somebody wakati unaenda kutembelea mtu don't go empty handed usiende mikono mitupu don't go and talk, tell those people how difficult the things are usiende ukawaambie hao watu vile mambo yalivyo magumu never share with somebody who is needy how prosperous you are never share with somebody who is needy usikawai shiriki na mtu ambaye ni muhitaji sio kushiriki huko kushiriki kuelezea testify never testify with somebody who is needy how prosperous you are ah uh, usikawahi shuhudia mtu ambaye anahitaji vile wewe ulivyo na mali the good faith imani nzuri is to share with them your prosperity ni kushiriki na wao your prosperity prosperity utajiri wako 
Number three. Number three, what ought the church is ought to be doing at this time? Nabari ya tatu, kile ambacho kanisa la sahiri kuwa likifanya katika wakati huu. Is to use our gifts. Ni kutumia vipawa vietu. To serve one another. Kuhudumiana moja na mungine. Amen. Amen. And exactly what the, the committee decided to do. Na ni haswa vile kamati wali amua kufanya. They decided to come into the shoe of somewhere and Monica wali amua kuingia kwenye viatu za za Samuel na Monica so that they can help them to arrive where they so dearly need to arrive ili wawasaidie kufika mahali ambapo wanataka kufika this is offering our services to them hii ni kutoa huduma zetu kwao what am i doing when i sit in the office uh, ministering to people or counseling people what exactly am i doing aje huwa nafanya nini wakati ninahudumia watu ama kuwapea mashauri kwenye ofisi i'm serving the people mimi ninahudumia watu and what the, the, the bible says na biblia inasemaje let's have people with the strength wacha tuwahudumie watu na nguvu and the grace God has given unto us. Na kwa neema ambayo Mungu ametupatia. Every day. Kila siku. See that you have done something, you have somebody served somebody with something. Ona ya kwamba umehudumia mtu na kitu. On Sunday we shall be here. Ajumapili tutakuwa mahali hapa. There will be people in the kitchen. Kutakuwa na watu wengine kanisa. On Saturday and Sunday there will be people who will be here. A On Saturday I understand there are people who are going to be here. Jumamosi naelewa kuna watu watakuwa mahali hapa. Offering their strength and their, their their energy to serve so that on Saturday come Sunday things will be all right. Wakitoa nguvu zao ili kwamba siku ya Jumapili mambo yatakuwa sawa. Just understand number one. Elewa tu jambo la kwanza. We ought at these last days to be loving one another. Tunastahili katika nyakati za mwisho kupendana. Number two, we ought at these last days to be giving hospitality, hospitality or offering hospitality to people who deserve or need. Uh, nyambo, jambo la pili tunastahili kuwa tukihudumiana mmoja na mwingine kwa kile ambacho tunacho. Showing hospitality, ukarimu. Uh, kuonyeshana ukarimu. And number three, we are supposed to be serving one another. Na jambo la tatu tunasahili kuwa tukihudumiana mmoja na mwingine. God's strength and God's grace he has given unto us. Kwa nguvu za Mungu na neema ya Mungu ambayo ametupatia. Number four, what is the church supposed to be doing at this last day? Namba la nne ni nini kanisa lisahili kufanya katika siku hizi za mwisho? The Bible says in the first 11 the book of first Peter chapter 4:17 Uh, four, one, four, seven to 17 verse 11 7 to 11 verse 11 Bila nasema ya kwamba katika Petelo wa kwanza uh, mlango wa 4 mstari wa 7 hadi 11 Verse 11 the Bible says this Mstari wa 11 Biblia inasema If anyone speaks uh, mtu akisema we should do so as one who speaks the very words of God Na aseme kama mausia ya Mungu Number 4 Nambari ya nne. Right now. Sasa hivi. As we see the day of our salvation growing or coming nearer and nearer. Tunapoona siku ya wokovu wetu ikikaribia sana. What are we supposed to do? Tunasahiri kufanya nini? If any man speaks. Mtu yeyote akinena. Let them speak as one who is speaking the very words of God. Na aseme kama mausia ya Mungu. In summary kwa kifupi, mutu, kwa kifupi the lord is encouraging the church in the last days uh, mungu ana anaeleza kanisa katika siku za mwisho to be doing much of preaching the gospel wawe katika kuhubiri injiri more than saying or speaking other things kuriko kunena mambo mengine kunena mambo mengine let me tell you wacha nikueleze some people here will face great wrath before god Some people who face great wrath before God. Watu wengine hapa watapatana na hasira za Mungu nyingi. Because God. Kwa sababu Mungu created you. Alikuumba with the ability to speak. Ukiwa na uweza wa kunena. He gave you an ability to speak and speak and speak and speak. Akakupea uwezo wa kunena na kunena na kunena There are people who are threatened to use their tongues. Kuna watu ambao wana they are talented. 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 Wameoezeshwa. Taranda zao. 
There are people who are talented. They have a talent of speaking. Kuna so watu, many words. Uh, ya kunena. But because of the way they dispose themselves to the nature. Lakini kwa ajili ya vile walijiachilia kwa hali. The devil took an advantage of their tongues. Shetani aka took an advantage of their tongues. Advantage. Their tongues. Shetani akachukua ulimi wao. Akachukua nafasi. Oh, akachukua nafasi. To use their tongues in the wrong way. Atumie ulimi wao kwa njia mbaya. Let me tell you. Wacha nikueleze. If you come across bad biters. Ukiwakuta ambao wanasengenya. They were not created backbiters. Hawakuzaliwa wakiwa wasengenyaji. They were created evangelists. Walizaliwa wakiwa waijilisti. Gives Jesus a hand. Tumpe Bwana Yesu makofi. What am I saying? Ninasema nini? If you find people who like talking about other people. Ukiona watu ambao wanapenda kunena kuhusu wale wengine. Sometimes you think they are anointed to do so. Wengine wakati mwingine nafikiria wamepakwa kufanya hivyo. But whatever they are speaking they are speaking about other people instead of speaking about Jesus. Na wa, badala ya kunena kuhusu Yesu wananena kuhusu watu. Raise up your hand and say God help me. Inua mkono wako mwambie Mungu nisaidie. People with much talking we are created to be evangelists serving the Lord with the gift of speaking the gospel everywhere. Watu ambao wana maneno mengi Mungu aliwaumba wa, wakiwa waijirisi wakinena kuhusu Mungu mahali kwingi duniani. Find me in other places. Find me in other places. Nipate mahali pengine. I don't know how to talk much like I talk on the pulpit. Sijui kunena mengi sana kama vile nanena katika madhabahu. Because I was created to preach the gospel. Maana niliumbwa nihubiri njia. And I know this is my purpose for life. Na ninajua hiyo hii ndio mwito wangu katika maisha. And in these last days. Na katika siku hizi za mwisho. I have resolved to do one thing. Nimeamua kufanya jambo moja. To preach Jesus and nothing else. Kuhubiri Yesu na sio lingine. Blessed be the name of the Jina Lord. Jina la Bwana libarikiwe. Church of the Lord Jesus Christ, praise the Lord. Kanisa la Bwana Yesu, tumtukuze Mungu. I am calling upon every one of you. Ninawaita kila mmoja wenu. To resolve to preach the gospel and nothing else. Kuamua kuhubiri injili na sio lingine lolote. Everything else should be secondary. Kila kitu kingine kitakuwa cha pili. But preaching the gospel, speaking about Jesus should be the primary. Lakini kuhubiri injili uh, kunena kuhusu Yesu hiyo ni ya kwanza. And now I sent you. Na sasa anawatuma. To everybody who comes to you. Kwa kila mmoja ambaye anakuja kwako. Speaking about other people. Akinena kuhusu watu wengine. As if they have been filled with the fire of speaking. <coughs> ni kama kwamba wamejazwa na moto wa kunena. Please whenever somebody opens their mouth. Atafadhali mtu anapofungua kinywa chake. To tell you about other people. Kukueleza kuhusu watu wengine. To tell you about what is happening in the land. Kuambia kuhusu nini kinafanyika. To tell you have you heard? To tell you to ask you have you heard? Oh. Kukuuliza kana kwamba je umesikia? We had somebody at home. Tulikuwa na mtu mahali. Every time people would come kila wakati watu wakija eno iguete je umesikia there are people who are anointed to do this ah kuna watu wamepakwa kufanya hivyo and the anointing is for, not from god na upako haujatoka kwa mungu raise up your hand to your neighbor tell your neighbor ina mkono wako mwambie jirani yako i beseech you in the name of jesus ninakusihi kwa jina la yesu say nothing and hear nothing but jesus christ on the cross you're not talking to me I beseech you in the name of Jesus. Nawasi kwa jina la Yesu. Hear nothing and say nothing but Jesus Christ on the cross. Oh, sikia kitu na useme eh? Hear nothing and say nothing but Jesus Christ on the cross. Die for us. Sikia kitu na usinene kitu ila tu ni Yesu aliyeangikwa msalabani. Speak about Jesus Christ being buried. Speak about Jesus Christ being buried. Oh, sema kuhusu Yesu asubuhi mapema. Be buried. Akizikwa. Speak about Jesus Christ being buried. Oh, nena kuhusu Yesu aliye a, a, kuhusu kusikwa kwa Yesu. Speak about Jesus who resurrected. Ah, uh, nena kuhusu Yesu aliyefufuka. Because the 
gospel is summarized with only those three words. Kwa sababu injiri ni haya matatu tu. Jesus on the cross. Yesu msalabani. Jesus on the grave. Yesu kaburini. And Jesus resurrected. Yesu amefufuka. If you're going to tell me anything else. Kama utaniambia kitu kingine chochote. Excuse me, spare me time. Tafadhali niokolee wakati. Na mtu mama ge kiogoreto inere ya Jesu. Na watu mkafanya hivyo katika jina la Yesu. Uliorajigwa nayo guko na igoro. Ananisikia inwe mkono juu. Why you a murderer or a kuru na mhahe na moshene? Sikia mtu anakuja kwako kwa maneno tupu. Mm mm. Matuko mati bago fikiria maundo basio. Ah ah wakati huu sio wa kusikiza hayo maneno. Just, just do this. Wacha tufanye hivi tufunge masikio. Teka hiyo. When you find people who are telling you about people tell them no. Tell me about Jesus. Sikia mtu anakueleza kuhusu watu funga masikio mwambie la 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 niambie kuhusu. Tell me about prayers. Niambie kuhusu maombi. Tell me about loving one another. Niambie kuhusu kupenda watu wengine. Tell me how I'm going to to show over my 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 hospitality. Niambie vile nitaonyeshana ukalimu. If these things are not being done by the church. Kama haya mambo hayatafanywa kanisani. Then the church is likely to miss the mark. Basi kanisa Is likely to miss the mark. Inaweza kukosa rengo. The Bible says. Biblia inasema, be in soba. Na tuwe na come out of your wake up from your sleep. Amuka kutoka usingizi. And the sleep here is also likened to, to death. Na, come out from your death. Na usingizi unaweza hapa kuwa ni kifo. And be ready for Christ is coming. Na uwe tayari kwa kurudi kwa Yesu. Be soba. Uwe tayari. So that you can watch and pray. Ili ukeshe na kuomba. Because the day of our salvation. Maana wakati wa wokovu wetu. Draws near than when we first believe. Umekaribia sana kuliko wakati tulipoamini. Charge Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Kanisa Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Siku ya kukaribia ya wokovu wetu imekaribia sana. Siku ya wokovu wetu imekaribia sana. Nyakati za kufanya mambo yasiyo na maana zimepita. A time doing empty things have come to an end. Let not what is happening around cheat you. Let not what is happening around cheat you. Let not what is happening around cheat you. Mambo inafanyika hapa hapa. Let not the things that are happening around cheat you. Yakudanganye. Wacha mambo ambayo yanasunguka yasikudanganye. That there is still time. Ya kwamba kuna kungali kuna wakati. There is no time. Hakuna wakati. Church, let's wake up. Kanisa wacha tuamke. Let us pray. Wacha tuombe. Let us hope for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wacha tutumainie kurudi kwake Yesu. And finally I conclude with this. Na na mwisho nafunga na hii. The book of Matthew chapter 13. Mathayo 13. You can read thereafter. Unaweza kusoma hapo baadaye. Matthew chapter 13 verse 24 25. Mathayo 13 verse 24-25. Ah uh, 24 na 25. Jesus was telling the church. Ah uh, Yesu aliwaambia kanisa. The danger of sleeping. Ah uh, hatari ya kulala. And not being watchful. Na kutokuwa As I conclude. Ninapomaliza. He said. Akasema. A farmer went. Ah uh, mkulima akaenda. And planted wheat. Akapanda gano. When the laborers went and sleep. Wakati wafanyikazi walienda wakalala. The enemy came at night. Adui akaja usiku. And he planted the wheat. Na akapanda magugu. When they woke up. Wakati waliamka. What did they find? Walipata nini? They are wheat together with the wheat growing. Kuna magugu pamoja na ngano zinakuwa. And they went and asked to the the master the garden, the, 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 the owner of the land. Na wakaenda wakamuuliza mwenye shamba. Do we approve to them? Je, tungoe haya magugu? And he said no, let them grow together. Akasema la hasha wacha wazikue pamoja. Least when you are plucking off the weeds. Ili unapo Ngoa magugu. Uh, magugu. Least you also pluck the wheat. Usingoe pamoja na ngano. But the time for reckoning is coming. Lakini wakati wa ku wa mwisho. Wa mwisho unakuja. When the owner will harvest the wheat. Wakati mwenye ngano atakapovuna. And you haven't the tears also. Na atatoa ata pia magugu and separate them. Na atatenganisha. I came to say. Nilija kusema Jesus is coming soon. 
Anaja. Jesus Yesu yuwaja. is coming soon. Yesu yuwaja. What am I supposed to entertain? To entertain? Ni nasahiri ku Patia nafasi nini? What is the church supposed to embrace? Kanisa ni stahiri kukubatia nini? Number one, praying for one, I mean loving one another. Jabu na kwaza kuomba na kupenda. Number two, showing our hospitality or offering our hospitality. Jabu na piri kuonyesha na ukalimu yetu. Number three, serving one another with the grace and the strength God has given us. Jabu na tatu kuhudumia na nanguvu na neema ambaya mungu wa metupatia. And number four, preaching the gospel. Na namba ya ine kuhudumia. We are supposed to do or to be busy in these last days doing those things. Tunasahiri kuwa tukifanya haya mambo katika siku za mwisho. Anything else? Ajaburu ngine lolote. As much as we may want to give them heed or give them importance. Ata kama ungependa kuyapeana sana sio ya muhimu. They are not in the calendar of God. Iko katika karenda ya mungu Though we must eat, we must look for food We must look for other things Ingawaje tunasahiri kula kutafuta wachakura na hata vitu vingine First things first Mambo ya kwaza ya ya kwaza In the name of Jesus Karika jina la yesu May we raise up on our two feet Naomba tusimame kwa migu yetu And may God bless the church Na mungu abariki kanisa I want to engage ourselves in this song shortly Ninataka tuimbe huu wimbo kwa so that you can continue thinking about this message and plan what you are supposed to do and start doing those things urgently praise team priest urgently you start doing those things urgently higwe kiriye gothira Mareri. We are going to sing that Kikuyu song. And I understand the time is almost over. Ah, I don't know. Ah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You know the song.
In the name of Jesus. Help us to understand the times. That Lord, we may know what we ought to do. To say, dear Kufahamu Majira. Ni Majira ya kutafuta uso wako. Ni Majira ya kumakinika katika kazi yako. Ni Majira ya kupenda ana bwana. Sinya katiza kudara wana. Sinya katiza kunena juu ya watu wengine. Ninya kati za kunena kuhusu Yesu kanisa Elewa Nima ya kati na, na majira ya kubere chiri Kwa nguvu na uweza na naema Yesu wa metukirimia Karika jina la Yesu Higwe kiri ya godhira Ya roho godha hipana The end of all things is at hand Be a rat e Be sober That you may pray be a rat e. Yes. Be a sober. Amen. And watch that you may pray. Amen. That the day will not find us mm. unaware. Oh God. That is a message to the church. Mm. Understanding the times. So that the Israelites would know what they ought to do. Understanding the time. Yeah. But the church may, today may know mm. what they ought to do. Maana binku. Ina matarajio. Mungu wa uzima wabariki sana. Amen. Kuna yenge penda kuwakoka. You are there, would like to give your life to Jesus. Inuwa mkono wako tutakuombea. Kuna yenge.